guys, welcome back to the Midday Mumbles podcast. I'm Gage. I'm Isaac. And I'm Brody. And it's episode 13 of the Midday Mumbles podcast. And here we are today. Here we are. Feeling, feeling fresh. Yeah. But before we get into the podcast, um, this episode is brought to you by our Patreon. Uh, go to patreon.com slash Midday Mumbles to support the show. Continue to allow us to uh, make this free. Yeah, go to patreon.com slash Midday Mumbles. Again, that's patreon.com slash Midday Mumbles. Let's get right into the episode. So how's everyone doing today anyway? Doing pretty good. You know, we we were just live streaming for like three hours, so that that was all that was a fair bit of live streaming. Me and Gage Brody wasn't there. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Loser! I mean, like what the heck? Why weren't you there, Brody? We needed four people. We were counting on you. We needed your help. And you weren't <laughs> there. What the heck? Where I know. were you? What I'm were a you bad friend. Doing? What were you even doing? Uh I'm a busy yeah, guy. I do a lot of things. Yeah, what's the Isaac? thing, huh? I demand it right now on the podcast. Uh, eating, cooking. Yeah, what did you cook? Some chicken. Oh, yeah? For lunch or dinner? <laughs> For dinner. You spent the entire day cooking chicken? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> I had to cook lunch, eat it, and then oh, I yeah? cook dinner and eat it. <laughs> Bro, we streamed for three hours today. You could have joined in at like played one squads with us. Nope. That would have been Dude, you can't streams. you can't cook and play video games. I know, I know. Says who? Know. Says who? Says me, because I can cook too. Uh-huh. And I can't. I've never actually tried game. it. Yeah. It's hard. I, mean, I don't feel like you know, especially if you're doing it. something that requires a lot of work. Like, um, you got a, a lot of attention, right? So something you got to constantly cook, like stir or something, you can't do that and play video games. It's like impossible. So, well, anyway, plus my internet's bad. So yeah, Th- this probably uh, would have sucked. This podcast, it's mm. gonna be a wee little bit different. We're trying something new. Our views are down anyway, so who even cares? So yeah. this week we're just kind of we're just kind of talking. We're not yeah, going no to stick to any any particular news stories. We really we don't have a plan besides skaters. Like we should probably talk about uh, Kobe, Kobe. Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Bryant. Uh, he died today. That's, that's trending. Yeah. Today. Yeah, he, he As that. we're that's... we're recording this on Sunday, plane crash. His uh, daughter died. Helicopter he died. crashed. Yeah, helicopter crash, and three others died. I don't. I mean, I'm not an NBA watcher, but apparently. Uh, adults are very like oh my god I can't believe it you know like Brody was telling me that his mom freaked out my yeah, mom my, was, my got mom like was excited like, holy cow I heard your mom you Isaac we were streaming <laughs> my brother texted me because he was watching the stream for like a, a 10 minutes and it was at that period where your mom was freaking out he's like holy shit what's going on there but yeah no I mean it's sad but like I don't want to sound insensitive, but like, what else is there to say? Sorry, podcast listeners. I, I separate myself from uh, from the kitchen when I'm doing the podcast, so you guys can't hear my mom freaking out. Oh yeah. Uh, t- yeah. Tell me, email your Gage mom if you want me to be in the kitchen with my mom freaking out in the future episodes. But you might actually like. What if she listens and hears you, you tell mean? her say you freaked out? She freaked out. What do you mean? I don't, I don't get what you're saying. So, <laughs> let's say she hears you say that she freaks out. Like, does, do you just say you freak out? Like, she she won't care. I mean, she usually gets upset at me whenever I'm just like straight up with her. But I'm not gonna not yeah. be just. I'm not gonna not be straight up. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, mom. Okay, you don't want me to lie unless it's gonna hurt your feelings. No, no. Uh, even I just don't lie. That's the trick. Mm. I know that for a fact. I've tried to get him <laughs> to before. I don't Not like I bad don't, lies. I don't like, like lying. It's like, wrong. Like, oh, this movie, this movie's rated R. You're not allowed to go see it. But uh, you know, just tell her you're going and seeing something else. But no, she doesn't. He doesn't do that. He is a real guy that doesn't ever lie. So he's trustworthy. I don't. I don't not ever. Obviously, occasionally in my life, I've probably lied. Well, you know, everyone has, but, but I try to not 
You know, if if you jump me on something that I really am not going to talk about, then I've I've said, you know, things before that weren't necessarily the entire truth and I regret it. But I generally try not to lie cuz it, it's bad. I don't I don't like lies. Yeah. I'm not a big I do you like to lie, Brody? Like I don't <laughs> do you like to? Do you why? Lie? Why would I like to lie? That's a terrible I don't know. question. It, I, <laughs> I should never be a journalist. Gage here okay? ruining the podcast. You know yes. things are going smoothly, and he's got to like ask dumb well, things. I know. I don't think like, even those compulsive, like obsessed liars, even like to lie. They probably don't. You know. Right. I I have something where uh, when I'm telling um. So, okay, <laughs> I don't lie about things, but like when I have in the past, I make shit up. But like it's so fluent. It's like you ever played that game um, where it's like I say a word, then Isaac would continue, and then Brody would continue, and it, we try and make a, make a sentence that makes sense. So like I might say I, and then Br- Isaac might say when, and then you might say to this two, and then I might say that, and then Isaac. Well, you get what I'm saying. But like I, I do that so fluently. I went to. Uh, the store longhorn steakhouse yes but like <laughs> i can do that very well to the sense where i i know exactly what i'm going to say before i say it and it's like you know i might be saying things so fluently pulling shit out of my ass i mean i don't think and it's it a actually good makes thing. sense yeah. it isn't a good thing and i don't you i don't do it that often but like i have before growing up and i mean it's a very good thing when I'm because I'm like a creative type, I like movies and stuff. So I use it to like write stories as far as like do I, you know, short films that I want to make. So it's very good for me in that sense. They come up with dialogue, but like I, 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 I used to, what I used to say growing up was so I take a story that's already said and then I add ju- So it's like a steak, right? You have a steak and then you're adding juice to the steak, right? You want a, a juicy steak. You don't want a dry steak. You want a juicy steak. I don't think you, you add the juice after you make the I steak. I know, I know. Though. I think but you that, make the steak right so I was ret- has the, the juice. juice is in retarded. the steak. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I, this is a bad analogy. I'm stuck on the Terrible steak. Terrible analogy. I'm well, confused. I was, very, I was very retarded growing up, so that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, that was just like an also over very to the retarded. steak juice. You know, yeah. I... That's but, uh, an idea. Why don't we sell steak juice a fire in the stores, okay? You got a dry steak, just pour some steak juice on it. We harvested the steak juice for you. It's it's I, What about what about like just, you know those um <laughs> Chefs you know, fix that problem. They inject hum- the steaks with juice. What about a humidifier? Get it, get it but nice like, and juicy. It, it's steak juice instead of water. <laughs> <laughs> like a machine that humidifies the steak? No, no. no he you means have a like a, a rum humidifier. And rather than putting water inside, put steak, you, you, you uh, put steak juice blood. inside. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, a humidifier filled with uh, a humidifier filled with that stuff that they package with steaks. No, like when you cook a steak, you're you have. The juice. blood. It's blood. So, no, that's yeah. not actually blood, though. That's just stuff that they package with it. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. So like your rum smells like steak. So like if if you didn't get if you like cut a slice fresh off the cow, it wouldn't be juicy. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> I mean, it would be, but if you just it went would actually out to your local better. farm and started shaving off steaks. My mom has uh, some cousins in uh, Norwich Walk that have a farm, and over the summer, uh, they have cattle and they sell the meat the steaks so every couple months they'd have like a new, a new uh they're like really good steaks too so my mom went and bought a couple it was it was really good you put it on the grill no like um uh preservatives no nothing it was it was perfect a really good steak nothing that you know stores put in wholesalers nothing it was perfect they were really good yeah, the red stuff in steak is actually myoglobin. What is, oh, yeah? what is it, though? It's, is it's it? found in muscle tissues, and it's used to carry oxygen through the muscles. 
and it contains yeah. a red, pin, red pigment. It's not actually so, blood. So it's a lot like blood, though, because, I mean, blood carries oxygen. Myoglobin is guys, like guys, guys. the inner muscle I have to, blood. I have to edit this, and I get, uh, like, I don't like talking about blood, and we're like... No, it's not blood, blood, blood it's blood. myoglobin. Yeah, yeah, it's totally okay. Not blood. It's totally this not is very, blood. This is very interesting, though. Yeah. Huh. We, people always think it's blood... Unless it's something that you packaged yourself and is like wild game or something, it's probably just myoglobin. Weird. So, so obviously we're all meat eaters here, but like Isaac, have you ever tried like a vegetarian lifestyle or brody? I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I'm not that far from vegetarian. I, I really don't like eating meats most of the time. It's not, it's not like you- a. It's not like a moral thing. It's just like I genuinely don't really like the taste of most meats. Like I like a steak every now and then and I like a burger most of the time, but pretty much all other meats I really don't like. Do you think either one of you could survive with strictly um, a vegetable diet? No meat ever. Like what you about, eat meat, you die. Are you saying vegetarian or vegan? I'm saying forced vegetarian. Like, vegetarian it, though, not like vegan. You'd be, you die if you had meat. Uh, yeah, I could live with I, that. I could probably do that. I don't think it would be that big of a deal. Okay, yeah, I could do that. But it would. Would you do it me. by choice? Uh, if if there were options, like if stores had options to be vegetarian and not like eat soy, then yeah, absolutely. You see, I couldn't do that. I feel like I'd go crazy without a burger at least once. Every now and then, either a bur- like steak or like even I mean, chicken. I like burgers a lot. That's like my favorite food is a nice burger from Five Guys or something. Yeah, but that's but pretty if you much think exclusively about the only meat I like to eat. Yeah. Gordy went out to his truck. I guess he made beef jerky. No, oh, Gage was talking man. about meat. That totally reminded me that I myself found some wild game meat that someone had uh, given to me. And I, they wanted me to, try me to make it into beef jerky, and I did, so we're going to try it. Oh, give, This is the first time Gage trying it. I've, I, of this course, is, ate a bunch is, of it before. This what is kind of, What jerky? kind of meat is that? This is wild Vermont deer jerky. Really? This is, de- this is, ga- this is game meat from Vermont. Their deer are very lean, of course, as wild animals usually are. Yeah. I've never had deer before. That's really good. Really? Holy shit. It might be a little bit spicy. No, it isn't spicy. Um, Do you like harder beef jerky? Yes. Yes, yes. I can talk about the whole process. I've made it before, but yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I, mean, it's just I did it this weekend. It, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah but you want you to cut it, it and you though. stick it in the dehydrator. Well, I mean, there's well, there's many that, different yeah. ways you can do it. You can you you can do it in your oven because it's a it's a process of dehydrating it, but also cooking it to a degree. Right. I mean, you have to cook it so that it's not filled with bacteria because I mean, obviously, wild deer are riddled with diseases. Uh, sure. Riddled. <laughs> think about yeah, how. Right. Okay. Think about how many ticks fall off deer after you hunt them. Like when you when you kill them, just ticks are just falling off in like waves oh yeah it's I know. disgusting i mean i'm sure all animals have that no matter whether they're wild or not because they're out in the grass all the time but have you ever had a deer burger brody have i mm. of course yeah i've never had one before are they good like i i'm tasting this and it's really good actually i'm surprised yeah. Like you'll usually find if if you if you make a food, say you take you make a stew, right? Mm-hmm. If you have a stew that's made out of just beef that you got out of the store, it's gonna taste worse than a stew that you made with wild game meat. It's always gonna taste worse. Yeah. Huh. That's really good. Because so I mean, who- I've had I've had like buffalo before. I lo- if there's a meat that I love that's the best, it's buffalo. Oh, you really? Know? Yeah, I like buffalo above anything else. Turkey, chicken, pork. Is buffalo is the best. not similar to beef in a lot of ways? I would think it'd be very similar to beef. It is very similar to beef, but it, it just, you know, it has a different taste. 
Oh, yeah? Is there a way you could describe the different tastes, or is it just you'd have to taste it kind of thing? It's richer, you know? Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's like... It's like the difference between going to a cake store or buying your cake at Walmart, you know? Yeah, no, this is really freaking good. One will just be richer, you know? I've never had this before. Like, deer in general. Like, I've never had it. But, yeah, this is really good. Epic food good review, job. guys. Get, rate it on a scale of 1 to 10. Right, right here, Honestly, right now. okay. So, the beef jerky is a totally different thing from if you had, like, a steak, right? Yeah, but right. on a, on a thing beef, beef, beef jerky, jerky literally, this isn't, like, the same thing. The beef jerky, I have a lot of beef jerkies I've had before. This is, like, an 8 out of 10. Because I've had fresher beef jerky. But, like, it, it's really hard. I, I've never had, like, this hard of beef jerky before. Well, well I think a lot yeah, of I like it hard, personally. Do, I think a yeah. lot of times when you do home-done beef jerky, it comes out fairly hard, too. Well, do you have a, do you have a system, Brody, at your house? Like a, a thing? Yeah. Yeah. My I have this little, too. like... <laughs> I have like this little drying rack hotel <laughs> setup. Yeah. <laughs> that's like yeah. a it's a it's a commercial product, but it it's a bunch mm -hmm. of discs that stack on top of each other and then at the top the top stack is a heating element, mm -hmm. but it's also a fan. Yeah. So it blows air down through, but it also blows really hot air, so it cooks yeah. it and dehydrates it. I know what you're talking about. My dad has the same thing. It's from Cabela's. Yeah, we've yeah we've, yeah oh yeah we've yeah. made uh we've made beef jerky before too, my dad has at least yeah yeah, mom, he made it though um and he he took it out before it dried fully, so yeah. it had a little bit of of moisture in it, and it was really good but yeah yeah yeah, really yeah. you can you can really cook it however you want with one of those because <laughs> it does a good job, like if I had to take this same batch out an hour earlier. It still would have been cooked, but it would have been a lot softer. <coughs> yeah, yeah. And some people do like that. Some people like the, <coughs> like the the slim jim type, soft beef the, jerky. Yeah, the little bit of myoglobin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to tell I you like, the truth, I like it to be totally dry, totally like I mean sticks or something. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> to, to tell you the truth, I am one of the types that likes to have something like beef jerky. Uh, like uh, Slim Jim, have you ever had like um, Jack's? What is it called? Is it Jack? Jack Links. Whoop. Jack Links. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really soft too. Yeah, teriyaki. That's my favorite. Yeah, those are really soft. Those would be one. Those would be ones that you could you could replicate that too, but oh, it's yeah. not it's not dried as long. I'm a, yeah, I'm a big well, fan of a like old old trapper beef jerky. If you've ever got that, it's it, that's my favorite beef jerky. For all of them. Well, the thing is, that, is it, it, well, old what? old trapper. Is that is that softer or harder? Uh, I mean it's 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 probably a little harder, but it's not like super hard. Like so, you'll mm. get some pieces that are fairly hard, and you'll get some pieces that are like kind of just more standard beef jerky. It, but it's 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 like the same thing as if you bought like a bag of of uh, Jack Link's beef jerky. For like the consistency, but the meat itself, I I just like it better in the way they it's bigger pieces typically, and it's I, I just like it better. The seasonings. Well, the hard better. thing I think I've is had that too. They come the, in the clear the, bags, right? Yeah, you can get them in a big clear bag. Uh, typically, mm. that's what they're in. The big, this like stuff is just like chips. Yeah. Oh geez. Gage, that, Gage can <laughs> not, Gage not can back that, that up. Yeah, but it's yeah, like it's it like is. eating a chip, but it's a meaty chip. But the hardest thing when making beef jerky is, is getting the recipe right because it, it's a lot of trial and error. Like when the my spice dad first recipe? did it. Um, yeah, and, and also how long you want to cook it for. Like yeah. my dad has done it before and a couple times now. He hasn't done it like a lot of times. He's done it a few times because he got the machine a couple years ago. And obviously it's a process. So he it, it's really hard to get the, the recipe 100% perfected. But... You know, he's made it a couple. He's made it like the first time it didn't taste amazing. The second time it was perfect. And then you know he plays around with spices and you know adds a little bit more of that and a little less of that. And oh yeah, like, I love doing that. 
yeah so um you know you have those those times it's like with kombucha like right you have a t- you, you're trying to figure out the recipe you're trying to make your pre- you're trying to perfect it well it's like yeah, that with I really anything am. it's like that with anything you know you might add too much of one thing and it's going to suck but then you you know reduce that and then add something to like dilute it a little bit and it tastes perfect right so there's a lot of trial and error and i feel like with beef jerky um the hardest thing is getting the spice because you know you're you basically can, you just, can easily end up with not enough spice and it tastes really bland i know what you're saying yeah but you really want a good beef jerky you want to marinate your your meat before like <laughs> i i like to marinate i like to marinate my steak or any any beef for that matter or anything for 24 to 48 hours because that that gives it that extra time Jeez. I like to see 24 <laughs> hours on both sides. <clears throat> so, yeah, I've done ribs before, uh, and I marinate it for 24 hours. So I put it in this like this uh, big. What do you What um, do you marinate it in? Well, I make a marinade. I I, I make yeah, a couple different kinds of marinades. I've done this over the course of a few years. Um, my favorite is is a really I like to have a tangy, uh, marinade. I like Southern style ribs. You know, and I know we're moving so into ribs now, but sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't like the sweet aspect more than I, I don't I like the taste of meat. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't I like think the sweet taste belongs of steak. anywhere near <clears throat> any meats ever. Period. Really? Yeah, I do not like do you, sweet. Do you like Actually, sweet chicken? Actually, you so, know you what? Honey chicken? ham, honey ham gets a pass. But besides yeah. honey ham, yeah. <laughs> nothing else to like should not be sweet. Period. I don't I've like tried it. sweet chicken before and I don't really like it. I think I could. I think I can almost agree with you on that. Other than I think ribs are really good with a, with a sweet taste. But here's the thing, okay? <clears throat> you, you you want to amplify the meat. You don't want to hide the meat flavor because you're bad yeah. at cooking. <clears throat> you know, you, oh, yeah. you put it in a marinade to mask that it's not very good. All but you need have is you guys... some salt. You need some pepper, and if you cook it well, it should taste good. Not like well done, exactly. But like, <clears throat> proficiently that's what i tell my dad my dad will so when he makes a steak right he goes and seasons it up all the way because it's almost like he doesn't like to taste the steak i don't know what it is but he for the longest time he didn't like a bloody steak he had his well done he likes he used to like his steaks really I mean, dry i mean i don't like a bloody <clears throat> steak I, I'm, I'm more of a medium medium well kind of person i like the pink in there because that is what gives it flavor but it being all full of all the, you know, it being just poor. That out. grosses me that, out. That's, that grosses it's me gross. out. I like medium rare, but the thing is, when you cook a steak, I like to. I have these times where I just feel like salt and pepper, both sides, cook it on the grill, medium rare. It that's the best thing to me. But then you have those times where it's like, I have had really good steaks that are really well seasoned, but like, you gotta know what you're doing. Yeah. And my dad knows what he's doing. My my brother has been learning spices also, and my brother makes I don't know my you guys might feel, make uh you guys I don't know if your brother cooks or anything, Brody. But no, but, no, uh, no, I'm the only one that cooks. My brother cooks, and he can. I mean, the other night he made a uh, about two weeks ago he made something, uh, a really good chicken, a chicken dinner. Um, he took like these chicken uh, breasts. Yeah. And made something boneless breasts, and it was friggin' good. He made a we nice gotta, a dipping sauce too. It was perfect. Gage, I'm Gage, like, you gotta bring back cooking with mom, featuring Connor Nelson. This is this could yeah. be crazy. Everyone's gonna be like I, Connor I Nelson, <clears throat> the one that makes tractor videos. I gotta watch this. Belie- you know, believe it or not, that that series takes a lot of work. Work, you know. You think the podcast, uh, I, the podcast is nothing compared to that. Like you got to be there to record. And at the same time, an episode of cooking with mom would usually take around a day to edit. And, you know, we were doing them on the weekly basis with season one and we got about eight episodes in and I'm like, you know what? I can't do this anymore because it took a lot of time and I was a full-time student also. So it would be literally, I'd be getting out of school because the episodes would come out, I think, on Friday. And we'd record them on, like, Wednesday. And I'd be coming out of school on Thursday. And it was the same process over and over. It, I, I thought it was stupid. 
But um, I mean, I wouldn't mind doing it again, but I don't think there's really a demand either. Like a few people watched it, you know, it was a meme at the school, though. I made a, a video cooking with Tritex and I did a pizza, a frozen pizza. It was a funny comedy video and Brody showed it to our advisor. And uh -huh. that's what I was known for. Tritex. That's what she called me. She'd be like, Tritex. <laughs> but. Oh, yeah, because you used to, your channel used to be Tritex. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Brody, do you, why did you why did you show that to her anyway? Just being funny? It was so... Dude, it's a comedy video. You said it was comedy. I thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah you thought it was funny for the for the wrong reason. Well, yeah, you thought it was well, funny because I knew it was you? cringy. Yeah, you thought it was cringy funny. Which arguably... So? Arguably speaking, Gage, there's no chance you could look back on the Cooking with Mom series and tell me it's not just made cringy. Oh yeah, the, the only thing is very possibly cringy. humorous about it is how crazy cringy it is. Yeah, I I I understand that. Um, we did uh, uh, geez, we were talking about we did a podcast, believe it or not. Uh, my mom and I, because she was all excited about the cooking with mom because it was getting a few episodes actually got some views, and she got excited because we we actually cooking with mom. Back in 2015, I did a series called Getting Fit with tri -Tags. And the series idea was I was going to the gym at the time. And it was like, okay, I'm into film. I want to make this work. So I'm like, okay. So I filmed my experiences at the gym. And she's like, why don't we do cooking also? So the first episode ever was cooking with tri -Tags. And we went to the store and everything. I brought my camera to the grocery store. It's actually kind of funny because everyone was staring at me, but um, <laughs> that's how the series sprung upon. And I mean, it kind of turned into the podcast and then we did uh, cooking with mom back when uh, I was on just my normal channel. We just decided to do cooking videos again, but I'm trying to know. remember what your original podcast was called, but for some reason I'm coming up. Uh, uh, the was, Karma uh, cast podcast. Yeah. Karma cast. That's what it was. Of course. The thing, course. the thing about that though, is my mom was very much, um, like, uh, she's like very much into, I don't, I don't, I don't know the best word to use it, but she's in, she believes in like karma and everything. Yeah. And we were trying to come up with a name, and I was thinking, why don't we just call it like the Gage and Christina podcast? So, you know, something simple. Like well, it's I mean, really hard to come up with podcasts. If you're the kind of person that believes in ghosts, you're probably also the kind of person that believes in karma. So that's all I'm saying. I don't believe in ghosts. It's ah. Uh, hey, hey, okay. Uh, Let me explain. Actually, I'm looking at the channel now. The last video was two years ago, and it started three years ago. We did eight episodes of. Uh, of season two. Okay, anyway. Um, I was going to say you're dodging the question, Gage. I don't believe in ghosts. But I was brought up in a house where it's... You could argue that it's somewhat haunted. Like Brody, for instance... So I, you, you've seen my house before. Brody's seen my house. Brody was in my house over the summer. He came uh, one time. And uh, he, I live on on one side of the house. Like my family lives on one side of the house. Well, the house is 200 something years old. It's an old farmhouse and a lot of weird shit happens in that house. And my dad never believed in any, any of this stuff, but you know, he, so there's some young girl that died in the house and they, he sees her from time to time when he's sleeping, like he'll wake up and she'll be standing right there. And then she'll kind of like walk away. She was like this young girl. She, I don't, I think she was like eight or something when she died. She hit her head on the front step. Uh, there was like a rock or something and she, she died. And um, I, I've had experiences way before though. When I was younger and I, I try and avoid this because it's the scariest thing ever. When you're, when you're growing up, I spent a lot of time at my house at home, so I tried to like avoid this. I tried to avoid thinking of it because when I hear when I heard yeah. stuff, I'd freak out. But I used to see ghosts like I actually did. Like I saw I remember these two events that really 
uh, correlated with each other because they were in the <laughs> same year. I was at, so one of my grandmothers, the, I think the first time I was with my grandmother, Patsy, who's no longer with us, I was at her house and she was holding me. I was young, like young, young. And all of a sudden I started screaming because I we were out on her deck where her pool was and I saw this guy walking towards us. And I freaked out and she brought me inside. I was flipping out. Well, I think it must have been like six months later. I was at my other grand- grandmother's house out where her pool was. And I saw this guy walking from the end of their field. And it was the same guy. And I could never figure out who the guy was. My mom was curious because my mom is a little different. She sees people in her dreams and she she hears events like I'm not going to go into it because I don't want I don't want people to think we're crazy. But there was one time <laughs> where she saw uh, this. Uh, so she was, she, you know, you know, uh, Betty uh, Birdie, right? Well, yeah, she had some pictures, some paintings of the lady who loaned my great, great, great grandparents money to buy the house years ago. Uh, there was a painting of her. It was like $100 or something. It was years ago. <clears throat> and they they built the house or whatever. I don't I don't know the exact story. But they had a painting of her. <clears throat> and Betty got it when I think it was when my grandparents died. <clears throat> um, my great great grandparents. And she got it in her house somehow. It was up in her, her uh, attic. And my mom had a dream. Of that painting. It was like she was up in some attic somewhere looking for a painting. And it was with this woman. Well, she wakes up and she describes it to my dad. And my dad said, oh, that's Rose. And my mom was like, really? Like, these people she's never met before. And she's having dreams about them. Like, I've done research into dreams. And the mind can't actually see someone unless they've seen them before. Like, it's interesting to to think about it. (laughs) You can't actually see a person, like imagine well, in your I mean, mind, unless you've seen them before <clears throat> or we, seen something of it before, some substance. We as humans are just products of our, you know, surroundings that kind of programs our brain and we build so, off of that, you know? So a week, of course a week later, a week later, my mom and dad are like in the truck somewhere and they get a call and that call was from Betty. And Betty says, I have some paintings up in the attic that I want, I, I, uh, I would like you guys to have because they're meant to be in your house. And my parents are like, okay. My mom forgot about the dream. You know, she's like, okay. So they go to the her house up the road. And my mom sees the paintings. And she got a bad case of deja vu because it was the same exact painting that was in her dream. And I don't know Betty uh enough if like you know she has similar dreams or whatever but she was antsy about getting those back in our house and they're back in our house now <clears throat> and she hasn't had any i i don't think related to that um but she's had other dreams about other things but you know that's kind of why i believe in it i don't believe in it fully but like i can't deny some things because there are some stories that you just can't deny you know and I've seen things which I know I've seen and I can't deny it. I can't, you know, you know what I mean? Like you can't deny something that's happened. Sure. So it's very, it's very hard. Like I like to look at things at, at, from a science standpoint and I've done this thing with my mom where I'll be like, okay, I don't believe in it unless you can, you know, everything's ha- can, everything can be proven by with science. Some of the stuff is just, you can't explain and I know she wouldn't lie, so she's not lying about it. But like, I don't know. So something funny. I don't know, actually. Gage. Maybe your mom's just a big old liar. Well, something <laughs> funny. If you here's something funny though. My and I couldn't believe this myself, but my mom used to watch, listen to this lady on the radio, Jenny McCarthy. She was like some model at one point. Now she has a radio station, and uh, she's Melissa McCartney's cousin or something. And she had this like psychic on the radio one day. And my mom's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. So she calls in and she actually was on the radio and the psychic was like asking her, didn't even ask her any questions. It was like, you know, what's your name? And the guy had said something about, do you have a a son named Gage? And you have like this barn, you have this barn at your house. And she's like, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And a few other things. And I listened to the radio because it was on Sirius XM. 
So I went on the, the account and I I wa- listened to the her little thing. And I'm like, okay. I, I guess I, I really didn't know how to solve that. I was kind of like, well, I mean, you could have looked her up on Facebook or something. But then I'm thinking, you know, her account's private because I made sure her account was private a few years ago. So I, I knew this really was. I, I knew that's probably why that. I, I didn't think it was plausible. So I'm very skeptical on a lot of things. But like. I know, I know it exists. So a uh, more of a recent s- situation, my mom's a real estate agent, uh, you know, for those of you that listening that don't know that. And there was this house in uh, the Waterville Fairfield area. And it was this mansion. And I went into it about a, two weeks before. My mom has to go like once a month to do inspections on it. And they've been trying to sell this house for ages. It's a bank owned property. And I went in with her because uh, she walked up to the door one day and the her her camera battery died immediately. It was fully charged. It died. I didn't see it, but she told me that that was actually one. Of, so she got a Google Pixel and in that same house, the Pixel was fried just randomly. It didn't work. And I know that actually happened because I had to deal with it. She brought the phone home and I'm sitting there troubleshooting it. And I called up Google and they said, They've never seen this before. They said there's never been a case of this uh, this specific error ever happening. And they didn't even know it existed. So there's something funky going on in the house. So at first, I'm like, I don't want to go in. But then she comes back in and I was feeling funny. And I'm like, you know what? Let's go kick some ghost ass. That's what I told her. I said, let's go kick some ghost ass. Some Casper. <laughs> and then you Casper get scared. You can't even walk down the stairs. <laughs> no, I, w- I went in there and I'm walking around. I'm like, okay. So I'm feeling this thing in my gut. And it's around the basement <laughs> door. No, seriously, like this, it was almost like a magnetic, a magnet, a magnet was pulling me. I've never felt this before. I'm like, whoa. And I'm feeling sick. I'm like, and then she walked, we walked by the door and I'm like, someone's there. Like someone's on the other side of that door. And we go into the newer part. I don't feel it at all. It is like, I went from feeling sick to normal. And then I go back out to that side because that's how you leave and my mom's walking around and I'm like I can't move my eyes are locked under the door and I'm like walking towards it I'm I don't know what this is and she comes in and then all of a sudden I kind of you know close my eyes and I'm like re-evaluating everything and I start to walk out she goes upstairs and I'm like I don't want to go up there there's something going on I don't want to go up there. And there's been some other things she's told me, and I am not going to mention them here because we could talk about this forever. But uh, <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to go in there, up there. So I don't. I I start walking towards the door again, and I hear this scatter, and I see something at the corner of my eye. Well, something ran across one of the big rooms because this is a mansion, by the way, that was built in like the early, I don't know, probably late 1800s, maybe earlier. Mm-hmm. So Isaac, do you know what I'm saying? Like big doors. Yeah, yeah, big doors, big doors. Gotcha. Like we're talking huge doors. Yeah, the biggest like doors you'll doors. ever see. Well, not the biggest you'll ever see, but pretty big. <laughs> so I'm I'm seeing this stuff and I'm kind of freaking out. And my mom comes in. And she's like, "What'd you see?" And I said, "I saw someone walking." So we leave because I felt really sick. And I get in the car and I'm feeling really sick. And we're driving away. And I'm like, "I don't, I don't know." Something is weird in that house. So a week later, Brody and I are, I went with Brody somewhere. I think it was the day before 4th of July because we went to Waterville and uh, we were hanging out. And I said, hey, let's go to this house. There's no electricity hooked up. So he goes in there. That's a very important fact. There's no electricity going through that house. So he is going, and I'm telling him about the basement. Here I am. I'm not feeling sick at all. I'm feeling very normal in the same spot I was feeling sick. He goes downstairs with my mom and they go down in the basement and he's walking by and like there was some light or something. And then he walks by the sump pump and it just turns on. There hasn't been power in the house. And my mom knew that, but she didn't want to say it. But you were freaked out, Brody. You were freaked out. I was freaked out a little bit. But there was no power. So that's what really makes it, you know, freaky. So... Anyway, you know, I don't believe in ghosts, 
but there's a lot of evidence to point that yeah that's you know i don't believe in ghosts but there's a lot of evidence that i can't explain so yeah you guys can run with that i guess i don't know yeah i don't know you've just been pretty much rambling for a little while now you've been mumbling you've been midday mumbling it's i'm just trying to explain day, myself you know what i mean i don't know what to mumbling. tell you about that midnight page. mumbling <laughs> i mean brody you felt weird in that house didn't you um i could have lived there i think you think <laughs> the funny thing worried. is people have been tried buying that house and every time the offer gets pulled out like they don't want they don't want it it's weird but you know i i don't, I don't feel the same way at the office this this but i've heard i can here, feel that this this place was built on an ancient Indian burial ground, and it is haunted. Well, no, I, I'm not talking <laughs> about Indian burial, bur- burial grounds, but as far as the office goes, I've heard stuff, and apparently Isaiah, Dumpf- shout out to you, Isaiah, if you're listening. He, I heard a story that he was down in the basement working or something, and he heard some talking upstairs, and I wasn't here. I guess Larry was leaving or wasn't here when that happened happened uh, larry told me the story he didn't tell me not to freak me out actually i i, I got confirmation on it and uh, i think it's just when you're anywhere by yourself i think you kind of start to think things like oh ghosts or something because when you right. hear noises I mean, I mean everyone does i mean i don't think ghosts when i'm alone i think like i don't really know but like, but i really can't explain stuff when i hear stuff when i was i was home alone a lot um but whenever I heard a noise, I'd be like, oh, it's a house settling. Well, the house has been there for hundreds of years. I don't think it's freaking settling at this point. I think it's already settled. So, you know, I kind of use that as an I kind of use that as an excuse to not think about it. But <coughs> I don't I don't like I'm not a big ghost guy. I I don't know. I yep. think I think uh I think you've been talking about ghosts for <laughs> I think long this enough. has been a crazy ghost. This has uh, been some well, serious ghost talk. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I, feel, I feel like you've I been know. telling me a bedtime story. You're putting me to sleep over here. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta say something now. I gotta say something now. So that movie we went and saw, nineteen, we went and saw a movie. There were a lot of dead bodies in that movie, right? Like, wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa! You just like, are we moving into nineteen? I did a one eighty. But is we're this, trying to make this fluid. Is this, still this is, about, new... is this still about ghosts or is this about the movie? Well, we want to saw a movie. We can Every... go into the we can go into the movie if you want. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we want we uh, uh, Hold on, let me let me gather let me gather myself, okay? I've been sitting here listening. So, we cool, yeah, man. we we did we went and, we went and saw 1917. Good movie, you know? Uh I was I was over yeah. at I was over at Gage's uh, office remount or mounting his uh cpu cooler because the one yeah, that initially came work. in was fried um it works by the way yeah yeah <laughs> this one works G- good job arctic you did it the second time um yeah. second time well yeah the first one the fans yeah it was the second been, cooler like the fans were just, oh right the fans were just mm-hmm. shot uh but we we were doing that and then and then Brody so Gage yeah Gage calls Brody he's gonna be like hey you wanna maybe see a movie tonight just hang well, out well you pulled it up on my and screen then, and like... then as as he calls Brody Brody's just like pulls into the office and just runs up and knocks on the door so that, that was pretty funny <laughs> yeah. that was pretty good just, timing, just, yeah. yeah that was that was like super were you timing. out there for a while. It, it wasn't intentional either, right? It was just like happenstance you were driving by, or, or were you just were you coming to the office anyways? I you was just out for a drive. Oh uh, yeah. Well, you you hadn't been home yet though. Okay, I was on my way from somewhere to somewhere. Yeah, where oh. were you going to? That's that's the. Uh, were you going home? Wherever the road takes me, man. <laughs> that's an interesting way to do it <laughs> well, then well, Isaac's like let's go to the movies so Brody agrees to it and he goes home and eats a burger because we had pizza on the way anyway uh, pizza was coming and got some, um, got some Al's pizza again 
<laughs> we doing this again Friday night? I don't <laughs> yeah. know. But um, no, we uh, we ended up uh, going and seeing 1917, and I was surprised that Isaac, you know, was into into. I know he would be into that, but I, I was surprised he. I, yeah, I, I like I like war movies. But uh, yeah, no, we went and saw it. I mean, I had, there was a lot of hype around it. You know, first movie that was like one scene kind of thing. This the single scene shot with a camera. <sighs> It just, I thought it was good. The only, I mean, the only it, issue I had the, with it was the, the score. The, I feel like it, it kind of felt like watching one of those cinematic type YouTube videos. You know how there's like cinematographers that will make the... Or the CGI yeah. sequence videos. In, indie cinematographers? Yeah, indie cinematographers on... Like a good indie cinematographer on YouTube. It didn't feel like a real movie. It just It kind of felt like a cool cinematic sequence you know well to me it always had me on on the edge of my seat because i i was surprised when it ended i thought there was a lot more movie but no it, it ended and I, I mean i don't know I, I thought it was good filmmaking i just hated the score i thought the score just didn't feel right i i don't think that mattered though i don't think that to me the score didn't matter at all it, it, it wasn't really what I was focusing on. My my mind wasn't on it. I didn't even notice it was playing music half the time. And that music was very important. It, it's just because it, it wasn't story. it wasn't important in this because you were with the character the whole time. You it, it, it was more raw. It wasn't like a you know it wasn't a crazy edited type feeling movie. I mean, it clearly was edited, but it didn't feel super edited. Uh, no. and, and that not. that fit that that fit with it, you know. It, it kept it very raw feeling, and and then that was good. At times, I wish they would have you know snapped to the front instead of like if he was running along a trench and they wanted to switch to the front of him instead of the back of him. I wish they would have just cut and then went to the front instead of like mm-hmm. swiveling the camera doing around a crazy him. camera spin. Yeah, cause it just it it, it kind of took you out of the movie, honestly, more than it did hold you in it. Well, there's really not much you can do, like when you have it in when you're trying to do something like that. It's it's like you're either gonna go around the character, it's like it's you're either gonna circle the character, or you're gonna like go up and down. Like there's no other ways. Well, no, but, but I'm saying not do it in one one take, or not do a quote unquote one take movie. You know, I mean, I thought it was. I I think they did a good job doing it. Yeah, the, it I was a think... great job. It would have been very. It would have been a very, very, very difficult movie to film, with a lot of challenges that most movies don't have. But I wish they just didn't even bother facing some of those challenges. I wish they just made it some of it like a regular movie. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, I like that they followed the characters all the way through, the same characters, and you didn't go to the other people in it. But... Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Why did I you send this to the general chat gauge? I saw it on Facebook, and I thought... <laughs> You're scrolling through Facebook right now? We're filming a podcast, <laughs> Shut up! I, dem- I, I listened through your entire ghost ramble. <laughs> and now we're talking about I was sitting here just like uh, and and now know? and now we get to the point where it involves all of us and you're scrolling through Facebook. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm off Jeez. now. I'm off now. I'm off now. Sorry, man. This better this better stay in the podcast. It okay? Is. I I want you to be exposed. Well, read the read the meme. It was funny, but it was it was poorly timed. Very funny. It is fun. This guy, is like, they they have a sign, and it says he's going to be a daddy, and then the guy says, I had a vasectomy three years ago. Like, it's funny. I don't know. But anyway, back to 1917. Um, yeah, good movie. Best movie of 2020. <laughs> no, no. Well, I, no. I like I I liked so far, Ford yeah. Versus... Oh, yeah, I guess. Of 2020. But, like... It came out in 2019. The... Over 369... Really? Yeah. Or 365, 69, 65 day period, I would say Ford versus Ferrari was better. 
it came out just it came out December fourth, twenty nineteen, but it it, it launched in London because it was a British movie, and British movies usually take a couple weeks to come to the U.S. Uh, wow! So that's why we watched it. We watched opening night at that theater, but just not. So that's why it was able to get like awards and stuff before it was out in the United States. Yeah. Well, that's why it's gonna it it'll probably win an Oscar. To be honest with you, it should. So it, I, I thought it was a great movie. It shouldn't, it shouldn't win Best Picture. It did. It won Golden Globe. It shouldn't win Best Picture, though. It was really good, though. I, I like... I think... I, as I said, I liked Ford vs. Ferrari better, but as far as a war movie, I would say this is definitely one of the better war movies that is that's coming This out. year sucks, because... I don't want to say it sucks, but, but, like, the movies that actually got nominated for Best Picture, I saw a majority of them, and I liked them all. Like, I don't really know. Like, last year it was like... Why does that suck? Yeah, that's it great. It doesn't suck, but it's hard to pick. You know what I mean? Like, you feel Joker bad for the got nominated. Having to pick? Once upon... I do, because they're... But... Like, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was a good movie. That got nominated. Joker was a good movie. Got nominated. But Ford here's, here's my argument Couldn't... to this, okay? Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was not a good movie, and, uh, you know, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm not going into this again. It was a good movie, but I don't think it should win an Oscar for Best Picture. No, I think it was more of a Joker was really good. I I'd say Joker, but was Joker shouldn't it. Joker shouldn't win an Oscar though. I don't I feel w- like superhero movies should win Oscars. But Joker was so good, especially for uh, you know, but a, it was a, a based on a superhero. Movie. Sure, but he well, a, su- a super villain it, it was just so in depth and emotional for a superhero movie it was it was so relatable in in a lot of ways and it really did go into basis of a lot of real problems while also being very interesting and very very fun to watch you know it, it i think they ought to have a category one of the better the movies Oscars. i'd say that it was a phenomenal yeah. movie at award shows, though, I think they should have a category for a special category for um, superhero movies. There's still because there's still movies. You know, I don't. I don't. I see... don't think Joker or like Avengers Endgame should win Best Picture. I just don't think it should, because you got to understand that when you have so those movies are huge and popular because they've got such a huge following, but like people that watch Avengers Endgame aren't gonna like understand or want to watch like the irishman for instance irishman is another movie they got nominated it's uh about mobsters uh the so basically uh jimmy hoffa it's that story and (laughs) i watched it and i gotta say going into it my dad is a huge mob fan and he loves the mob he loves organized crime and he like personally like he's involved in in organized crime no he wishes he was though <laughs> um, yeah, but What's, um, he he I'm loves not, it. He I'm loves the stories. He's infatuated. With, he's always watching a documentary on it. Um, but he's been looking forward to the Irishman for over like ten years now, because they got announced or something, and then they like couldn't find a, a home. No one would make it. No one. No one would finance it because it, it's a high risk movie. Everyone's seen it. It has De Niro, Al Pacino, uh, Joe Pesci, all the big old actors. Everyone's seen it, so it's it's a risk to finance nowadays. But it was a good movie. It surprised me, and it's up for Best Picture. It's a Netflix movie that came out in theaters, select theaters, so it could be eligible for awards. And I don't know. I liked it. I don't. I don't know if I want it to win Best Picture though. But I, I really think Ford v Ferrari is the movie of the year. You know. Yeah. Hey. You know what? You guys you guys doubted this, okay? I just want to let it be known. You guys doubted this format. And it seems we didn't to doubt it. kind of work. We talked about it. Yeah, we, we talked it the entire time. It was our idea. Time. Brody talked a lot, you know? I would say this was... We didn't great. talk. Yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, I don't know. You guys tell us what you think. Please just just message Gage. Like, we, we need constructive criticism. Uh, we really do. We, need to figure we will out have people play. on. Like, I would love to have people on. Please give us ideas. To, like, please, please, you know. Send us an email. Us. I will be happy we, when I see an email. One email. We love. We gotta get. We gotta set up an email first, though. 
I can never see an email if Gage does not set up an email. Yeah, Gage, set up an email but right now, will, live on the podcast. Well, not live, not live but... Because I don't know what I will use for but, details. But, but on the podcast, um, this should stay in. Listen, we do want criticism because it's a good concept of a show. But, like, recently, I, 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 I'm speaking for myself. I just feel like every week comes by really fast. And we are doing a podcast. It feels like every, you know, it feels like every, fast, very fast. We record a podcast and then like snap a finger and we're doing another one. Yeah. And we don't really want to, we're not journalists. Like we don't want to talk about the impeachment or what Trump said or, or what Apple's doing unless, unless we think it's interesting. Right, and I, I, we're not I really don't think we have any special insight on any of these things. We don't we don't know any more than anyone else. We just get our news off of random news sites and kind of put in our own input into it. It's it's not like a, we, we we don't have much that we're working on. So it's I feel like it would just be kind of boring. But for we're also watch. weekly, so when we release right. our podcast and we have the clips that come out, you know we're a week late. So something that happens on monday it's a week late from the official episode coming out and then a week from then when the clips come out so it's old news but if we start doing interesting things and like start having guests on i feel like that'll turn into more of a hoppy show because people will want to see the the new content or we can even I, i think it'd be interesting to review things like like buy unique foods or something from another country and eat them on the podcast something and review it you know things that are different and that would that would last asmr asmr guys no 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 not asmr the last thing i want is asmr we all turn off our microphones and we eat it and then we (laughs) no chewing i can can eat my beef jerky really close to the microphone no please no I like the idea. We don't. Guys. We don't need that crowd. <laughs> but we want. We want to hear what you guys have to say. We really do because, I mean, this is a cool concept. We have fun doing this, but we don't want to see it end because, like, we just the views, the the downloads are are going down. Right. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're gonna be completely clear. And like, if no one's listening, Isaac's not gonna have motivation to do this. Or he's not gonna have motivation <laughs> yeah, to do this. Yeah, Isaac is gonna be all, destroyed. It's all, it's all, it's all for me. Just please give me. Well, last week, last week we weren't even gonna do a podcast. Bro- Brody was the reason we did it because he stayed. Our home morale is so low. Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Well, please donate to us gonna, on Patreon. <laughs> yeah, I think that's gonna end it all out for this week's episode of the Mini Mumbles Podcast. Uh, if you want to support us on Patreon, that's patreon.com slash midday mumbles. I'm going to say it once. Um, you guys know what our URL is. It's in the description below. Help support uh, I the also, show. I also, I expect Gage to make an email for midday mumbles and he'll post that in the description. I'm just calling, I'm just making sure yes. it's solidified right now. Also, so join if the you Discord have an server. idea, join our Discord. On, uh, yeah, and join our Discord. You could talk to us on the Discord too if you have an idea or whatever. I, I'm, I'm, I'll check it. I usually don't check the Discord because it's inactive, but I'll still at, check it. At Isaac Uno. At yeah, Isaac and, Uno, uh, because he won't ever check it. <laughs> and this, this will, uh, this could be cool. I, I think, I think we could do something with this. Uh, so please give us ideas. Well, we just, we don't, we don't want to see this die though. That's, right, that's what it yeah. is. We want to see it prosper, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I think that's all for today or this week. Uh, Check in next week on Monday and see us uh, again. So from all of us at the Midday Mumbles studio, Gage, Brody, and Isaac, signing off. See you later. Bye. Bye.